The evolution of practice management continues with Amicus Attorney 2010 Premium Edition and Appointment Adjournments. Amicus Attorney Premium Edition has always been an excellent scheduling application. Simply linking through to the calendar from your office allows you to view not only what you're doing, but what everybody else on your team is doing as well. Of course, there are times when it's necessary to reschedule an event, and Amicus has always made it easy to do that as well. Simply grabbing the event and dragging it to an available time slot will allow you to instantly reschedule the event and, behind the scenes, check for availability to make sure there are no double bookings. Just like that, the event's rescheduled. But with calendars in a law firm, particularly for attorneys, it's not enough just to reschedule the event. You often have to keep track of the reasons for rescheduling. These are called adjournments, and in Amicus Attorney 2010, we have an ideal solution for you to keep track of those. Let's pop back to the calendar on the 5th, and I'll show you what I mean. On January 5th, 2010, Perry Mason has a motion scheduled from 2 to 3.30 on the Dominion Cooperative file. And if we were to reschedule that motion, it would certainly be rescheduled on Perry's calendar, and with optional notifications, all of the people involved would get emails. However, we're not tracking the reason for the event to be rescheduled. So how do we handle that? Well, quite simply, in 2010, you check the small checkbox here that's called Show Adjournments. Immediately, once I do that, the appointment is now configured so that any time anybody reschedules the event to a different day, the system will automatically require that they track the reason for that rescheduling. It's really that simple. Let's see it in action. So we've checked the box that says Show Adjournments, and now we're going to take this motion and move it over to the 12th. Drag and drop, just like we always have, and immediately pops a box that asks for the reasons for the adjournment. All you have to do is enter the reason for the adjournment. So let's say the opposing counsel is out of town on an emergency, and the judge has granted an extension. That's a good enough reason. Click OK there, and the appointment shifts over to the 12th, just like it always has. But notice back on the 5th, where the original event was, it now says that it's adjourned, and it's grayed out, and inaccessible. So it still lets you know that the appointment was originally scheduled for the 5th, and has now been moved to the 12th. Let's have a look at it over on the 12th. Here, it looks just like the original event. The difference being, is when we open up this appointment to look at the details, the details of the adjournments are there. Notice you can't turn off adjournments now. You've already adjourned the event once, so they're now part of the event's history. Looking at the details, it shows us exactly when the adjournment took place and what the reason for it was. It's quite simple and quite effective. And of course, all future adjournments of the event will be tracked as well. So if we move this event over to the 13th at this point, I enter another reason for the adjournment, and so on and so forth. Every single time the event is changed, the adjournment gets a new line item added to the details. And if I cancel at this point, the event simply doesn't get moved. The adjournments are now locked with that event. So this is a great function, especially for those that need to track the reasons for these rescheduling of events. But what happens if there's just a simple mistake made? What if I was supposed to schedule this event from noon to 1.30 as opposed to 2 to 3.30? Well, all I do is reschedule it just like I normally would. I just drag it up to the noon time slot and drop it there, and it gets rescheduled and everything else happens that would normally happen within an Amicus system but there's no adjournment box. That's because the system knows that a simple drag and drop or reschedule to a different time on the same day isn't really an adjournment, is it? It's just a rescheduling, so there's no need to provide a reason there. So it's showing a little bit of business intelligence built into the product with this adjournments feature. There's just one more thing I want to point out to you. What if we've moved an event, in this case from the 5th to the 12th, and that was a mistake? So we want to now move the event to a different date altogether, and we don't want any record of it ever being on the 12th. Well, quite simply, you just delete the event and start again. All I have to do is highlight the event, hit delete on the keyboard or however else you want to delete your events, and yes, I want to delete it. The system is going to prompt me to delete just this instance of the event, or both events if the original should have never been on the calendar as well. So in this case, I'll just delete all and then I can schedule again for the original date. It's now gone from the 5th as well as from the 12th. Very easy to use, very elegant function, but very powerful function as well, and I think you're really going to like it. Thank you for watching. To find out more or for a personalized demo, please visit www.amicusattorney.com or call 
1-800-472-2289.